Hello. We're here at Bergen Street Comics. It's an amazing place to get comic books. And the reason that we are here is because today we're talking to Phil Jimenez, who's a writer and an illustrator for Marvel and DC. And we're gonna be sitting down and talking to Phil about the intersections between queer communities and comics. So I was, I was totally shocked. And What's the first time that you remember? like sitting down and drawing. I've been holding a pencil since I can remember. There's actually a little drawing over there of Wonder Woman that I did when I was seven. Oh my God. It's like, oh, that's actually pretty good. It huh? is, it's <laughs> amazing. I'm Phil Jimenez and I'm a writer and artist for DC and Marvel Comics. It's not a big deal, but I'm being turned into a superhero at this very moment, so. Portraits are all about capturing not just traits, but the spirit of a person. So uh, what I gathered was that I'm very spirited. Um, you got it correctly. <laughs> you are very spirited. How do you identify? I absolutely identify as gay, probably more than, than anything else. I knew that I was different at a very young age, and I feel like I grew up creating fantasies in my head, all because of the sense of difference. If I told seven-year-old Phil that he would grow up to become a big deal comic book artist, I think he would look at me and then turn back to the pad that he was drawing on completely disinterested. Talk to me about when you realize that this could be something that you did. As a child, like a lot of children, I was a big fan of monsters, dinosaurs and sharks. I used to love museums, the dioramas and the objects in glass cases. People designed these spaces to tell stories and they were taking me on stories with them. And what I wanted to do was in turn tell stories. When I discovered comic books in my teen years, the thing that blew me away was not just the fantastical elements about them, but this narrative visual. I came out in comics in the mid-1990s in the back of a comic book called Tempest in a tribute to my boyfriend, Neil Posner, who was the man who hired me at DC Comics and had died the year before. I cannot imagine a safer, more wonderful place to have been out and gay. And the other thing that was really incredible was coming out to a fandom that was hyper accepting. I've always experienced so much of what happens in the land of superheroes as a direct parallel to being a gay man, being a queer woman, um, being othered. Has that been your experience? It has my, been my experience. I think only in recent years have I realized how much by attending all these comic book conventions and seeing young people, groups like Geeks Out, who did FlameCon, they see the medium and interpret it through queer eyes and sort of are able to actually manifest its queerness, like in a very visible, vocal way, um, and make it more obvious to people who I'm not sure would have thought of it that way and just 20 years ago. Right. Blamecon, it's New York City's first LGBT comic convention. It's pretty awesome. What really excited me about FlameCon was seeing all these new young artists across the LGBTQ spectrum presenting their work and their wares and getting attention. And it was one of the best, most spirited, most sexy conventions I've ever been to. And you've done work on um, X-Men characters, uh -huh. right? I have a big passion for the relationship between like the mutant society versus the non-mutant society. X-Men has often stood as a metaphor for difference in the past two decades, that difference really equates to being gay. To me, the X-Men was always a positive uh, symbol as much as one that suggested sort of darker underpinnings of the way human beings uh, yeah. interact with each other. Yeah, they're being persecuted, but they're so badass. But they're so badass, <laughs> and they're beautiful doing it, and they've created a world for themselves. they created a life for themselves. So despite that um, persecution, despite the fact that sometimes they have to hide away, they've created a niche for themselves. They can join hands and fight the world. For me, um, there was sort of a beautiful element to the X-Men too, and that they had crafted these amazing lives, fabulous lives for themselves, certainly sheltered from humanity, but um, they'd created a network of safety, a place where mutants could be together and be who they were and express who they were. Comic books serve as outlets, right? So they're not just entertainment, but they are projections of fantasy. And so while I wanted the X-Men to serve as this you know, this um, utopian ideal for me of fabulousness, for many people, the metaphor of otherness and fighting back against those who persecute you was very, very important. I can't even begin to imagine how my relationship to comics would be different if I wasn't gay, because my reading of them has so much to do with my identity and my sense of myself 
and the way I navigate the world as an othered person. I want to ask you also about these new characters that are coming up. Characters that are actually out as bisexual, as queer, as trans. As long as I've been in the business the past 25 years, there have always been some kind of character that represents queerness. Usually gay male characters, sometimes gay fe female characters. But what's happened in the past 20 years is that we've seen uh, people really champion them. And when I say people, I mean people behind the scenes who are making business choices. They care about showing the diverse worlds they live in and they see financial opportunity in it. Even though there are many now, there's still relatively few, they end up becoming symbols. It's an unfair burden, I find, for some of these characters. So what I'm looking forward to is even more of them. The other thing I'm really interested in is how they are positioned in the larger culture. So using Midnighter, openly gay, makes comments about other guys' butts, etc., but is still kind of like a kick-ass, leather-wearing, I'll beat the shit out of you, um, alpha male. And what I get really excited about are the possibilities of expanding the idea of what a queer character can be. And when a major company publishes a book whose queer character doesn't sort of still embody very straight archetype ideals. Yeah, you want a character that breaks the binary. Yeah, yeah. completely, totally. Aside from my own uh, that my own personal social agenda, I think great stories come from that, right? It's a new point of view. Mm -hmm. Comics are inherently gay, or inherently queer, if nothing else. And what's beautiful about a medium like that is the, the ideas that you can introduce subtly, and sometimes not so subtly, which can really have impact on the culture and certainly change the lives of the readers themselves. I'm a superhero. I know I mentioned it a couple of times, but this is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for, for talking to us. But really, thank you for making me a superhero. You know, I'm like, I'm glad about the interview. <laughs> this is really the, the money here. Thank you all for watching, as always. Please subscribe to our channel so you can keep seeing all of the fun, um, amazing interviews that we have in store for you. And today's question for everyone at home is, I've been turned into a superhero today, right? I have to think about what my superpowers are going to be, but we want to hear from all of you. Who would you be as a superhero and what would your superpowers be? Let us know in the comments and have an awesome week.